Welcome everyone. Welcome to tonight's Art of Domination Masterclass. I'm super excited to be doing this class. I'm super excited that you're here. Um, thank you for joining me from wherever you are in the world. Um, this is going to be an absolute um, amazing class where you'll be able to really um, tap into um, the, the the art and the spirit of domination and what that means. Um, welcome B. Jackson. Welcome Lavinia. Welcome Enchanted One. Um, welcome Charisse, who's following up from YouTube. Welcome Feminine Mystic Magic. Welcome Magic, uh, Majestic Mystic TV. Welcome Jesse D. Welcome Robin Scott. Welcome Slims Bazil. Welcome everyone to the live. We have about 17, 18 people as they're logging on. Welcome Cheryl Hodges. This is going to be an amazing masterclass because we're going to delve into a lot here. And so before we get started, if you've never followed me on YouTube, thank you for signing up to follow the channel and more of the instructional parts will be loaded onto the class so that you're able to um, really unleash that beast. Good evening, Princess Naomi. Good evening, Cheryl. Good evening, um, uh, Shatoya. Welcome. Welcome, Princess Naomi. Welcome, um, Happy Richland Pretty. Welcome, you are power. Welcome, welcome, everyone to the masterclass. So if you know, I've been kind of laying off a little bit of so much video content. I've been posting on Facebook, but so many women have asked Dr. P, please reactivate your YouTube channel. So I want to say welcome if you knew. If you have followed my work over the years, you know that there's been a progression. You know that there's been um, growth and you know that there has been rapid expansion. So if you're new, welcome. If you're returning, welcome. And if you are here from the Sovereign Woman Business Accelerator, which is uh, my private business accelerated group, welcome to you as well. And maybe pulling up some of those individuals to our actual class as well. Welcome to Keisha. Welcome so Sovereign. Welcome Ajoy Childs. Welcome everyone to the class, right? So this, I thought I would do a class as a gift to you for coming back to YouTube, for coming back. And you can rewatch this class over and over again as much as needed. But I wanted to do a presentation where I get it out there to you so you're able to understand what is domination. So welcome, everybody. We're going to get ready to definitely get into it. If you have comments, you can always post your comments here. I have the tip jar right up here. Feel indulge if you need to. But otherwise, this is completely free. This is a gift for you. This is a gift for you that are following so that you can follow the direction that my work is going, which is um, a level of supremacy and a level of domination and a level of absoluteness, which is needed by everyone that is truly of the mind that you can have what it is that you truly desire. So welcome everyone to the class. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to get started in tonight's class. Let's start with domination and what is domination. If you do not have paper pencil, you want to jot this down. You want to get a notebook. You want to get some things going with you because this is going to be one of those uh, master classes that change your life. So if you don't have a notebook, paper, pencil handy, um, something that you can write on, I suggest you go ahead and grab it as well. So tonight we're going to delve into the art of domination. What it is, what does it mean to dominate, what are the key principles of domination, and how to really unleash that inner beast that's in you. Because there's so many, so much stuff out here, what I, what I call the noise right? That is telling women you should be feminine and soft and all this stuff. And you should go out here and learn all these new things and do all this stuff. Listen, when you tap into the spirit of domination, you're tapping into your natural power structure. So we're going to get into what is the art of domination? What does that mean? We're also going to get into um, the key components of domination. How do you dominate a space? 
right? And then we're going to get into some of the laws of domination, what that means. And then we're going to get into some takeaways. So that's going to be the structure of tonight's class. So if you do not have a paper and pencil, I would surely advocate for you to grab those things now. Let's get started. What is domination? Domination is essentially your ability to take back your inherent God-given power to live as masters on earth. You did not come here to work. You did not come here to give your gift of way for free. You did not come here to be colored, black, female, limited, oppressed, suppressed. You didn't come here for that. When we talk about domination, we're talking about your natural power structure. We're talking about what does that mean? What does it mean to dominate is to actually tap into your God-given structure to live as masters on earth. Everyone is entitled to live as a master. The concept and the construct of paradise, of heaven, is in your mind. It is not a physical place you go when you die. It is the degree to which you can control and master your reality. Now, we also look at the resourcefulness of you to fulfill your absolute divine potential. Everyone came to this planet with a seed. Everyone came to this planet with a gift. Everyone came with a anointing on how this life should be lived. So there's no such thing as a person who does not have a gift. There's no such thing as a person who was born without a calling. There's no such thing as a person who is not a leader. There's no such thing as a person who's meant to follow and be a servitude. These are classifications of peasanthood. And we'll talk about that in just a minute on what it really means to be a peasant. In essence especially as a woman, but this applies to everyone on earth. You were designed for power. You were not designed for subservitude. You were designed for power. But the only way to maximize that power and to access that power is to practice your God-given right and path of domination. Now, you have a right as a divine being to take what is yours. What do I mean by take? Because I know you hear me say that a lot in reference to taking what is yours and unleash, unleashing that inner beast. To take what is yours means that you are willing to shed limited beliefs, limited structures, limited values, and actually place yourself in a reality that you desire. To take what's yours requires a level of boldness and requires a level of uh, just courage. Most people, when they think take what's yours, they think you're taking it from someone else. But you have to understand that when you were born, you were gifted and embedded and inoculated with a seed of divinity. And that seed is your access to paradise on earth. Right. So those that do not cultivate their seeds, those that do not practice the art of domination, whether they call it that or not, those that do not intend to fulfill their destiny cannot bring a seed into fruition. And the world does not thrive off of your seeds. The world thrives off of the fruit that you bear which is why there are entire races of people who have nothing and will never have anything. The first law is that you can never derive your power from someone else. So if you believe that you are oppressed, if you believe that you are a woman or a black woman or there are not enough men in the world or you got to suffer for this and try for that and go through all kinds of STDs, abandonment, single motherhood, these are your problems and these are your limited beliefs you simply pack your shit and leave it is just that simple 
It's not a discussion. It's not a protest. It's not a debate. It is not a struggle. You pack your shit and you leave the reality, the community, the, 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 the group, the organization that no longer is aligned with the seeds that you are bearing. So when we talk about the spirit of domination, we're talking about those that understand a kingdom-based mentality and those that understand a earthly-based mentality. You see, a kingdom-based mentality is not based on religion. It is based on order. It is based on power. It is not based on likes and relationships and following a leader in your household. You as a sovereign woman, especially, would never have a leader in your household. Because that man or that woman is also born for power and to lead. The problem is when you follow the value of people who are not of a kingdom mind and of a kingdom consciousness, you end up with shit. Which is what has happened to entire races and sexes of people. You have to understand that domination is a higher principle. It deals with things like territory. It's one of the principles of domination. So the idea that you have to own land is your God-given responsibility, you know? It is your responsibility to own land. So the first principle, or one of the principles of domination is territory. You must have territory to practice the art of dominion. Now, that territory can be a house, it can be land, but it better be something factual, real, and tangible, not just in your mind. The second principle of domination deals with character. Your character is the measurement or the degree to which you believe yourself. See, we, we're doing away with all this outside figurings. Your character is not whether or not you're good or bad. Your character is to what, what degree do you believe in your own God-given power and ability? That's your character. Because you take that, perspe that perception and that perspective into everything you do in life. So the first is territory. You must own territory. As a woman, it is ungodly to not own territory. It is ungodly to not own real estate if you have a kingdom consciousness. And a kingdom consciousness is simply your ability to practice dominion on earth. You're not, you're not a peasant. You're not waiting to die to go to heaven. You understand that this is the same shit that told slaves. You have to, un it's like waiting on Santa Claus. This shit is not real. So if you believe that you have to die before you live, that is the mind of a peasant. That is the mind of a peasant, a person that believes they have to die to live. I'm not talking about rebirth. I'm talking about physical death. So the first principle is territory. The second principle is character. How is how do you believe yourself? You see, I hear a lot of people, I'm manifesting. I'm manifesting. I'm, you're not manifesting anything you don't believe to be true of your nature. Your nature decides what becomes true for you. Not what you want. Not what you desire. Not what you dream. Not what you have passion for your nature meaning your personal constitution of self determines what you have access to this is why character is important this is why dominion is important it's because you must have land to practice dominion you cannot practice dominion the only when you see people controlling other people it's because they don't have territory so the first order of business in a dominion, in a dominating state is territory. You should be thinking about territory. How can I align with a greater territory and dominion? 
This is not for the person that doesn't want responsibility. Dominion is not for the oppressed and the victim. Dominion is not for the lower class. Dominion is not for the peasants. By law, the wealth that a peasant produces is automatically given to the righteous. When you do not own territory, you die with dishonor. See, we could, we're going to get away with this owning of cars and stuff. That stuff is easy. Territory takes discipline and management. And in a kingdom-based consciousness, you only have access to what you can physically man manage. You can't manage a house. Don't ask for an apartment community. You can't manage an apartment community. Don't ask for a block of real estate. You can't manage a block of real estate. Don't ask for an entire downtown. You can't manage things, including your budget. Do not ask for more. First principle is territory. Second principle is impeccable character. You see a lot of these peasant ass motherfuckers have you out here Lowering your standards, thinking, A, you got to do this to be married and do this. You were born as a sovereign. Exactly when did you become peasants? You were born in a state of sovereignty. This is not based on race and class hierarchy. Those are false systems of power. So the second one is character. The third principle of domination is expansion. If you have the right seed and it's truly your seed, the world will bring it to fruition. You will never bring your own fruit into fruition. Never. That is the, that is the role of what we call outer intention. The spiritual world brings your seed into fruition, not you. The only time you're working to bring a seed into fruition is when it's not your seed. When you are mimicking somebody else or you have a false value system that does not belong to you. When you are in a true state of dominion, you can harvest seeds like people pick tobacco. It is not a problem. So the third aspect of domination is expansion. You should be consistently enlarging your territory, which means you should not be retiring from anywhere. You should not have 10 years of making more wealth than you have in produce. If you are working on a job and you have been there for 10 years and you have produced more wealth than you own, it is a curse to you. That, it, it, that's the curse of a peasant and a slave. It's when you produce more wealth than you have. See, nothing is wrong with producing wealth. Everybody is going to produce wealth for themselves or by default for other people. But the key is to produce more wealth so that you can enlarge your territory. So expansion is the third principle. If your territory is not expansion, if you're not going from one fruit to another and you're consistently growing, something is wrong. You either have the wrong seed or it's not truly your fruit to bear. So the third principle of domination is expansion. You must grow in consciousness to manage a larger territory for your family, for yourself. This is where family name and legacy and trust documents become very important because you were never designed to live outside of a trust. You were never designed to have grandchildren that don't inherit. Your, all of your children and grandchildren should be heirs. This shit is in the Bible. It's in the Quran. It's in the Torah. It's in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So tell me why don't they follow it? Because they are not of a kingdom consciousness. They are of a race consciousness. 
Race consciousness cannot elevate your mind to the level where you can expand territory. Race consciousness simply have you in agreement with the people that look like you. You're begging for the same things. You're fighting for the same things. You have similar experiences. That means you're locked into each other's experiences. The fourth principle of domination is principle. Principle. Not principle as in the principle of a school, but the actual ability to create value that is consistently increasing. So when we say, does a person has principle, what they're asking you is, can that person create value? Can that person create value and then earn a multitude of interest or, um, or of financing or money or wealth from the value that they've already created? The fourth is principle. The ability to create value that is consistently increasing. This is the difference between godliness and non-godliness. See, everybody can go to church, but everybody doesn't have territory. And then the peasants get mad of those with territories because they have to turn around and work and increase their wealth. A peasant will always increase more wealth for others than they have for themselves. This is how you can tell they're cursed. It's not that they're not working hard. It's not that they're not going to school and getting degrees. It's not that they don't own a house. They own a territory. Because territory stretches your ability to order, to have power, and to manage. You see, you don't know who you really are until you have to manage things. When things are changing and things are moving, when you have to manage things consistently, you discover your own innate skill sets and then the ones you need to pass off to other people, like your accountant, like your buyer, like your lawyer. These are all specialties of running a territory-based family, all right? The fifth principle of domination is transmission. Transmission is the consistent flow from you to the divine. That which we call God or spirit. That flow should guide and be your inner voice in your, in your territory. Transmission is it's the consistent flow between you and that which created you. And that should always be open. Okay? So let's get into some of the, the constructs or some of the key components of domination. Because in order to understand these components and apply these principles, you've got to reshape what you are. You can't believe you're a normal person doing normal things uh, with normal people. You have to separate yourself from the masses. The masses of people have agreed for servitude. It is not wrong. It is not evil. It is not ignorant. It's not bad. It's just in this life, you always get what you choose. There was not a person alive that is not getting what they have chosen. So when a person tells you they cannot pay their bills, it is because one of two things. A, they can't manage, or two, they don't value what it is they have. This is why men that do not have the capacity to manage a family can never build wealth. They'll tell you it's because of another man. They'll tell you because they were oppressed. They will tell you because somebody was shot down in the streets. They'll tell you because the world is against them. But the truth of the matter is they cannot manage a family. So therefore, the kingdom does not allow them to evolve. You can only evolve to the level you can manage the resources that you actually gather from a steward from the kingdom. You don't 
own it, you are a steward of it. And while it's in your hands, it should be increasing. So the first structure that the kingdom gives a man is the ability to create a family. That is his test run for a territorial based life as a master, as a territory, territorialist. We y'all like to call them colonists and imperialists and all this other bullshit. You strip you, you attribute to men in power. You see, they came and took what your men had because your men had no foundation of family. So therefore. They can have all the resources in Africa, but they cannot keep anything because they are out of alignment. They're fucking ungodly. This is why you can never go to quote unquote a man to determine you. You should never consider what a man needs from you. You are built for a king in a kingdom. So you should never have to make yourself wear polka dot dresses and talk soft so that he feels like a king. Some of this fuckery that they be coming on here with is just ridiculous. All these mind games they playing, all these talk soft, think like a man, act like a lady, think like a man, act like, are you fucking stupid? You have a set amount of time on this earth and you need strategy, you need territory, you need assets, you need trust, you need governance in your household. Because when your structure is sound and your structure is godly, you don't have to no longer do the work because the spirit and the universe and the kingdom and the outer intention will take you to the next level. You will bear seeds like you bear ideas. So this idea that you've got to work to be something feminine. There is no woman on the planet that has to work to be feminine. Your essence is both masculine, feminine, neutral. You oscillate with all Forms of emotions. Have you ever noticed that the poorest men are always the ones telling you what they like? It's because they can't manage a family. So now your standards have to adjust to what they can actually provide. And they don't even do that well. They don't even do that well. So the first thing with a, 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 a man would be to determine if he is of a kingdom consciousness. This tells you if he will be able to manage territory, including his home. So the idea of who's paying for what should never come on the table because if you are accustomed to managing a territory and you are accustomed to managing a family, then the idea of who's going to pay the mortgage is not on the table. So let's get into some, some of the key components. Number one, you are a beast. You're not feminine. You're not delicate. You're not soft. You can be soft. You can be delicate. But you better make sure that if you're being soft and delicate, you are in a safe place with a safe person who is of a kingdom consciousness and owns the territory that you can be soft in. But if you have to get out here and build wealth of yourself like I did, no, you're going to be a little bit more rigid, not masculine, structural in nature, strategic in nature. See, they're used to women being led by the emotions of wanting to be liked, wanting to be pretty, wanting to be accepted, wanting to be tolerated, wanting to be chosen, wanting to be a wife. But the truth of the goddamn matter is this. The first thing you need to want is territory. Because when you come to the table and you have your own you decide who comes and goes in your experience. And you also practice the managerial side for expansion. A lot of women can't advance because of the partners and the men they're stuck to. 
And they keep telling you to re keep recycling these motherfuckers and they are not able to still maintain family. You go from one to the next, one black one, one white one, one white one, one black one, one black, it's constant. Because the truth of the matter is, when you practice beasthood, and you need to say to yourself, I am a fucking beast. I'm here to take what it is that is mine. I'm not taking from somebody else. I'm not robbing from somebody else. But everything that is possible for my life, I want it. The wealth, the power, the territory, the expansion, the travel, the health, the wellness, the mindfulness. The real estate, I want. You have to acknowledge that you are a fucking beast. When you acknowledge that in yourself and you acknowledge that, yes, I want power. Power to determine my reality and my destiny. You have to acknowledge that you don't want to be on earth fucking around with other people, losing time, losing resources, collecting STDs and protesting all day long. When you say to yourself, I'm a beast and I plan to dominate on earth. I will go from energy. I will go to housing. I will go to agriculture. I will go to mining. I will go to real estate. I will manage territory. So the first thing is to admit that you are a beast and that you are here to dominate. These are the components of domination. Beasthood is the foundation, meaning you're not trying to fit in with the masses. You're not trying to look like you're going to do right and be a good wife. You know who are great wives? Women who have shit. They're great wives. Because they know they're in a partnership with another kingdom mind and consciousness person. And that person knows if you Fuck over me, it's checkmate, motherfucker. I'm not crossable because you're not deciding whether or not I eat this month. You're not deciding whether or not I get my nails done. You're not deciding whether I buy this land. You're not deciding these things. And as a matter of fact, I'm not also deciding those things for you. We are building territory together. So beasthood it's the highest form of sovereignty and femininity. Don't let nobody fool you as if feminine is soft. That is not correct. Soft is prey. Soft life, you can be soft with a man who's built a territory for you to be soft in. But while you're out here building wealth, you're going to have to think. You're going to have to have strategy. you got to have energy. you got to have resources. And you know who's going to give it to you? The same men they tell you to hate. The same ones they tell you got their foot on their neck. It's the ones going to make sure that you can expand your territory. That's why you don't need to be making any unnecessary enemies in this life. Stop listening to people who don't manage territory. And stop following this softness softness equals prey now that doesn't mean you have to be hard but you do need to have structure about your life and you do need to know how to manage territory you're not always going to be soft you're soft when you are with your partner and the privacy of y'all territory. But if a man has not secured territory for the, for the feminine to be protected and molded and flourish, fuck around and be soft if you want to. You're going to find you and your children homeless. Softness is intimacy. Softness is resoluteness and absolute knowing that you're building something bigger than, your, bigger than yourselves. Softness is responsibility. Softness is authority. Softness is accountability. If those principles are not in place, you ain't got no business being soft of mind around or with or in a house with a man who does not own territory. It is a failure for you and your children are destined to be bastards and peasants. That's a fact. They're going to be bastards and peasants. 
When you give a child to a man that does not have territory, it's a 50% chance you have birthed a peasant. What are they going to inherit? How are they going to eat? What is the family budget? Because your economy, your, your budget in your home is the most powerful economy. So no, you're not feminine. You're not masculine. You're a beast. And a beast is the kind of woman who is bold enough to take what it is that's hers. She can have 15 babies by 15 baby daddies and still go out here and buy a $2 million piece of property. This is what I mean by beasthood. When you close your legs, close your house, and close your purse to non-territorial men. The first conversation you should ever have with a man should be about what the fuck he owns. That's going to tell you to what extent you should entertain his company. If the answer to that is I'm working on something, he is for a teenager, not a grown woman, and especially a grown woman that has kids. You can't eat potential. You can't eat building. You can't eat a college degree. You can't eat hard work. You eat fruit. So the first thing to honor in the components of domination is beasthood. Number two, you have to acknowledge that you are of a supreme class. Now, they like to call this elitist and supremacy. of a, You're that. Supremacy is stepping outside of the norm and holding yourself to a higher protocol than average people. Average people want houses, you want land. Average pieces, people want maybe a rental property, you want an entire apartment community. Average people want a car, you want a fleet of boats and yachts and airplanes. So you have to be honest with yourself that in nature, you are a supreme. Supreme means not only what I have the best that life has to offer, but I will also hold myself to the highest standard. You see, character is your barometer. Your character is going to decide how you manage the territory you do have, which is directly linked to your ability to expand. So if you have poor character, poor character meaning you have such low self-esteem that you're not taking what's yours, but you're taking from other people as yours. That's poor character. Because now you're managing fruit that you didn't bear the seed for. Which means that you are not of a supreme class. You have to acknowledge that there's a reason why classism is in the world. It is because families that think alike are alike. Families that live in low, impoverished neighborhoods all think alike. Families that live in $10 million neighborhoods all think alike. So you have to acknowledge that you are level of supremacy and that you are indeed here to dominate. The third principle or component of domination, <clears throat> we did the principles before, now we're doing the components. The third component is value. When you have territory, you must create value. If that's a house, if that's a building, if that's land, if that's an apartment, if there's an abandoned building or whatever, you must create value. And the only way to create value is to see what's not there. A woman that cannot create value is a poor woman. A man that cannot create value is a poor man and should never have rights to a family. As a woman, it is part of your responsibility as a supreme being to create value. You have to create something. Because the only way to move from seed to fruit is to create value that can be systematically repeated. 
Now, the demand for repeating that value will come from outside of your reality. But the creation of the seed and the value will come from inside of your reality. One uses inner intention and then the outer intention brings the value into fruition, into demand. When you create value from a seed, outer intention now moves that into fruit and demand. You then now take that fruit and create a system. This is the pipeline for generational and eternal wealth. The seed and the value comes from you. It is something you were born with, but you don't go from seed to value just because you have a seed. You go from seed to value when you begin to look at that seed from different perspectives, which means that you're able to gather information about things. You are a good reader. You are a good listener. You, you consistently educating yourself. You exposing yourself to different levels of information. You're having yourself coach. You're reading books. You're going to seminars. You're joining business accelerators. This is like spreading fertilizer all over that seed. I like to call it gold dust. You spread it all over that seed and something is going to germinate. When it germinates and you put it out there in the world, the world will tell you whether or not it's fruitful or not. Now, how do they know it's fruitful? Because they're willing to buy it. They're willing to trade their time for it. They're willing to barter for it. Now you have a seed that is budding germination. It's about to become a seedling. Once it becomes a seedling and grows all the way up, it's going to do what? Drop another seed in the ground. It's producing another system and another plan and another plan. Now you have power to create wealth and value systematically. Seeds have nothing to do with creating babies. Seeds have to do with fertilizing and harvesting your divine potential as a being, as a human being, as a person that is up of a upper echelon. Yes, you are supreme in nature. Yes. You have to be that. Yes, you are in a beasthood. No, you're not going to be soft and pretty when things are going downhill. No, that's not appropriate. That's not even common sense. So the third component is value. The fourth component of domination is production. How productive are you? If you watch The Real Housewives or anything, get that shit off of your TV. That's not to say you shouldn't have some frivolous things just to blow off some heat. Maybe that's that for some people. But in order to produce, you've got to be able to create the same fruit over and over and over again. So, for instance, you have land. And you build a model house and somebody comes along and buys it. This is the most beautiful house in the world. But you can't produce another one and another one and another one. Production is how you create the same fruit and value over and over again. So you have to ask yourself this question. The seeds I have, which are my business, because every supreme woman has a business. There is no such thing as a supreme woman who is a beast that does not have a business because her goal is to manage and govern her territory and create work for all the people that share in the production of her goals. You will rarely see a supreme working besides modeling. Her work is done when she creates the right seed at the right time for the right food and the right harvest. All that pipeline takes divinity. So production is the fourth component of domination. You can't dominate anything you don't produce, which is why there's poverty in the world. It's because the people that consume the most, the people that consume the most produce absolutely.
absolutely nothing. So it is lawful that they shall never have wealth. If you are consuming more than you're producing, it is ungodly for you to receive wealth. Okay? The fifth component is where are you shopping at for your ideas and your realities? It is what is called the alternate space. Alternate space. It is the mindset that says, I'm not going to follow other people's fruit. I'm going to create my own, literally out of thin air. You see these ideas that you get when you're traveling, when you're going places, you're going to these conferences, you got to find a way to collect these things and put them in a fruition environment. A, a highly energetic environment. The alternate space is where you're going to shop as a supreme and as a beast and as a dominator because you're not relying on your eyes to tell you where opportunity is. You're relying on that internal feeling that tells you where to create opportunity for others. And the only way to pull that up out of you is to get out of line with everybody else. To stop doing what everybody else is doing. Stop following everybody else. Stop getting on that marriage bandwagon. Stop getting on that pretty bandwagon. Stop getting on that real housewife bandwagon and ask yourself, where is my seed? And how do I bring them into fruition? How do I put myself in environments with people who are masters at bringing a seed to a fruit to a harvest? Those are the people I want to be around. If I don't see you producing seeds, a fruit, and a harvest, i.e. businesses that are rolling over into other businesses that are growing and diversified and expanding, I don't have anything in common with you. You have to know what it is that you were here to do. No one can teach you that. When somebody, you have to allow. If you are able to honor what it is about you that is you, spirit will germinate that seed outside of you. You don't have to go from one networking event to another networking event and meet the right people and up in these people's faces and trying to get collaborations on YouTube, trying to get collaborations on Instagram. Spirit would do that for you because it's your seed that was implanted in you in the beginning. When you're in your own lane, doing your own thing, your own way, you now have leverage. There's no one in front of you. But if you try to expand upon somebody else's seed or you are mining a seed that's not even yours. It's a seed your mama gave you when you were five and you wanted to be a designer, but instead you, she told you to be a school teacher. So you spent 30 years mining somebody else's seed that's not even your seed. That's a pass through experience and you done ded you'd have dedicated 30 years of your life to a seed that's not yours. I will also say this. When you are nurturing a seed that is truly yours, the work on that seed is pleasurable. It is life force generating and enhancing. It is not uh, sucking energy from you. Okay? You have to know your seeds. And we'll get into the power of the seed because I think a lot of people don't know how to self-harvest seed. They don't know that an idea is a potential seed. An idea is a potential seed. Your attention to that seed will decide whether or not it goes into germination. If you're watering it, it could go into germination or it could die in the soil. But what do you water a seed with? Information, new information, exposure, new environment. Because when a seed is in a new environment with new information around new people, it has to show it face a different way. 
So it's very important. I think we're going to take some time on this channel to go and talk about fruitating from seeds to ideas to fruits to harvest. Because I think that pipeline, people don't know what is a true seed versus what is what you're good at. Or what is a true seed versus what you do to make a living? Or what is a true seed versus how do you spend your time? Right? So those things are really, really important. Your seed, you received at birth. Outer intention and spirit will bring your seed once you project it out. This is what I do. This is what I love. You will radiate that mental energy in and around you. Those that are part of your seed family, those people, those businesses, those places that are supposed to be your customer, they are actually part of your seed family. This is something you receive at birth. This is not something somebody took from you. This is not something you just became good at because you liked it. You received it at birth because everyone came here for a specific mission and gift on earth. You see, you wouldn't come here without a golden key to paradise. That seed is your golden key that unlocks the door to paradise on earth. So the people that are not having a good experience are people who, for lack of a better word, ungodly. Because the only way you're not having a good experience is if, them, if you're not bearing fruit from the seeds you've sown. If you're dying in the streets and protesting and talking about you won't, you won't, you telling somebody's daughter that she's a five out of ten, you have no seeds. So now you harvesting energy from other people who don't have a value on their own life and their own seed and their own self-esteem. When you send your seed forth into the world, it will radiate energy out. This is what I mean by spirit will take your seed to fruition. Your customers are part of your seed family. Those are the only people you need to be marketing to are the people that are part of your seed family. Those that are in need or find value in your seed. Everybody else you do not need to talk to in reference to that particular seed. So your seed is your business. And your business already when it was inoculated in you already had the capacity in this lifeline to activate everybody else that was part of that seed family. You have to understand how this network works. It's based on power, not hope. It's not based on popularity. There are people that have 25 people on Instagram and they're grossing $5 million. It's not based on how popular you are. If you're likable, if you're feminine, if you're masculine, if you're hard, do you have the capacity to germinate your seeds and send them forth into the world to become fruit so that you can focus on the most important job you have as a beast, which is governing your territory. Your seed it's meant to free you from work. If it's your seed. Your seed is your business that you're able to create value to put into production so that you can now build a system around. When you built the system, you now have leveraged your way into territory. Seed, germination, fruit, harvest, Value, production, territory. It goes just like that. So anybody talking about something outside of you that's controlling your ability to be prosperous is lying to you. Anybody telling you you're not complete unless you're married is lying to you. What you've got to get rid of out of your spirit is why do I believe I have to be married to be a child of the creator and a successful one at that? Perhaps your energy should be not on people, but on germinating your seed so that the people you meet are also seed germinators. There are also people that are bringing in fruit into the world. 
There are also individuals that are building territory. Never as a supreme woman seek a man. Never. As a supreme, you are in demand. I didn't say control. I said demand. Because when you know how to cultivate seeds, a real king that governs territory would never allow you to pass through his experience and he have nothing to offer you. A man has to come with offerings, territorial offerings, because you are in demand. When you've done the inner work and you're about your business and you're living as a true supreme, as a true dominator, and you're in that spirit of God in you, where you go from seed to territory quickly, this is what's meant by godliness. It is the same recipe they use in the Bible. It is the same recipe that the founding fathers of America used. It is the same recipe Henry Ford used. It is the same thing. Seed to territory. Quickly. Now, in closing, let's go over some things, some statements that you should know as a supreme, as a dominator, as a person who is coming to earth to dominate your territory, not people, because people can manage themselves. You're here to take what is yours and bear fruit. And by bearing fruit, <clears throat> you are providing and making heirs out of your children. You're creating not only trust between you, but a trust document that says, I came here and built something of value that is redeemable eternally. Redeemable eternally. You cannot redeem retirement eternally. You cannot redeem a job eternally. So let's go over some power statements that you should be, that you should know and understand as a person who is dominating their reality. And let me say this too. Everybody doesn't understand this kind of spiritual dominance. They believe they are a peasant that is going to heaven. They don't understand how ungodly that position is. Neither will they ever develop the mental aptitude to understand why they're in that situation. And those situations, which is where a lot of people are, it doesn't make you better than them. It just means you're different and you are bearing different fruits. They're bearing children that kill each other and you're bearing empires. It's just the way that it is. And if you have any kind of resentment towards people who have built empires, you have to let that go. They went from seed to territory at the expense while your or while some people were making babies and protesting. They were actually going from seed to territory. And they did it enough times that every child born is now an heir eternally. We can learn from the Rockefellers. We can learn from J.P. Morgan. We can learn from uh, Madam C.J. Walker. We can learn from um, Mrs. Pleasant. We can learn from all these people. They follow the same mechanism, especially for American wealth, but it's not American wealth. It's godliness. Following the seed that is in them and bearing fruit from that seed. So let's get into it. Number one, you are more than enough. You are more than enough. Anybody that tells you less than that, you got to change yourself. You simply have to take your phone and delete, block, and move on. You were inoculated with the seed when you were born. That's nothing else that you do but discover the seed and move the seed to territory. You did something about your teeth or your hair or your skin or your tone that's going to either fertilize the seed or keep it laying dormant. Number two, you have a divine purpose and you were born with a sacred seed. That seed is your token key 
to territory. Number three, you have to take what's yours by leaving the crowd and choosing a path that is where there is no line and no competition. You choose from the alternate space. And we'll get more into that on my YouTube channel. Number five, you must act in the direction. This is not about people I'm manifesting, I'm manifesting, I'm manifesting, I'm nothing. You know how the quickest way to manifest, act? Act boldly in the direction of the choice you made. If you said you want to have a multi-million dollar business in agriculture, you better be acting in that direction. In that direction, don't be spending all your time sitting up working at Walmart. Some of them, you want an agriculture farm, but you don't have no farming books. You didn't apply and get the criteria for a farm loan. You didn't select the land. You didn't select the seeds. You didn't try. Okay, you must act in the direction of the choice you made because one thing is for certain: you will always receive the choice you made. All right, your choice, and this is number six. Your choice is always realized. Everybody's life right now is a reflection of their choice. If they're having a great life or at least uh, are taking the most good out, hey, they've realized how to take the seed to territory. If they still believe that some mythological person is holding all their wealth and creating these barriers and creating these financial limitations they would never have it and rightfully so when you are in the spirit of domination this is how the spirit of domination behaves number one it filtrates your experience what's seedly godly and what is not number two it penetrates the earth Mean you take action in acquiring assets and territory. Number three, you materialize what it is you saw. Number four, you occupy territory. And number five, you put a system in place that is realized. The art of domination boils down to your ability to move from sea to territory in an unrestricted way. In an unrestricted way, meaning you are avoiding consistent energy vampires, politics, social class, popularity, real housewives, uh, rappers and people influence you are the biggest influencer in your life the spirit of domination and the art of domination can only be practiced by the supreme being of their own reality supreme means you're lawful you abide by the laws the governing laws of practicing practicing dominion on earth you see, that's the real purpose of marriage is to co-dominion on earth. It's to co-partner quickly. This is why money and wealth matters with your partner. It's because if they built no wealth, if they built no substance, if they built it, they have not, what are they gonna, how are you gonna acquire territory? How? The art of domination boils down to your ability to recognize, nourish your seed into territory. Territory being land or real property or intellectual property, but it is a form of physical ownership. Anything less is ungodly. So when this, when you talk about poverty and why people are poor, it's because in essence, because they're ungodly, ungodly. It's not because they don't believe. They believe in a higher power, but they don't honor and recognize the laws that that higher power make part of their responsibility. They don't want to honor the constitution of family. They don't want to honor the constitution of honoring your wife and your husband and your children. 
They don't want to honor what it means to have a family. They don't want to practice dominion. They don't want to manage wealth. They don't want to manage territory. But all they can do is believe. Belief is not enough in a kingdom. Some people only believe because they're afraid not to believe. You would know a believer by their territory. No territory, they're a non-believer in themselves primarily. I'm not talking about in other people or other entities. When you find a person that is dominating territory, they are now of higher character to the point that they believe themselves. They figured out a key to go from seed to territory. This is the difference between the supreme class and the peasant class. There are only two classes. That's it. So when you are able to understand how the spirit of domination works, it is a kingdom consciousness based reality where you are on earth to practice dominion over what you have. To practice reciprocity over what you have. To govern and manage what you have. A lot of people can't even manage the finances of their home. They are making more wealth than other people. You know how much of a curse that is to make more wealth for other people than you make for yourself and your children? So you go to work to get a paycheck to come back and give that paycheck to everybody else. Instead of putting that paycheck in a value system of production to create the value for your heirs. You're not going to create value for somebody else. That is what we mean by cursed. It ain't some woo-woo person doing something to you. You're doing it to yourself. And if you ask them, they're, they're fine. And the truth of the matter is they are. But that's not your highest existence. So when we talk about the spirit of domination, we're talking about moving from seed we're talking about moving from seed to territory quickly. I'm going to open up the floors now for questions. I have a couple of people I bought up here um, on the stage. If you have questions in the audience, um, you can type it in the comment section. If you have any questions, I'm going to take some questions now about anything that we discuss. If you have a specific question about your business, about a seed, about harvest, about the art of dominion, um, there is... <laughs> I move my upcoming book is actually uh, moving from supremacy to the domination code, right? And it's putting that seed to territory pipeline in your hands. So that's what I'm working on now in, in, in terms of my book. So this helps me to get content out to you as the transmissions come to me. So if you have any questions, let's talk about them now. What questions do you have about your business, about your seed, about dom um, domination? If it feels natural to you, because some people, are, I'm not going to say I'm a beast because beast are really, I'm going to be an angel and a manifester. Great. As long as you own territory. But I don't see these people that are manifesting all this stuff owning anything. I see them using up other people's resources and looking for a rich man. The fastest way, and you know I say this all the time, the fastest way to find a rich man is to be a rich woman. If you're a rich woman, you don't have a problem with finding no rich man. It's the poor ones that have the problem because they want something that they are not. They, they desire a level of living that they themselves have not generated. So it'll last a long time until they come to a fork in the road where they actually have to produce a fruit. Let's get some questions on here. Any questions? Um, Khadija says, one well, when men are, um, let's see, uh, hold me for our, our wealth building now. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Building territory is your first marriage as a supreme woman, not a man. Having and building territory is your first defined responsibility as a woman. Okay. All right. We have a question here from Sharice Hale. She says, um, Dr. Portia, I need help with the scarcity and lack mindset. I find myself constantly attracting clients who do not want to pay me my value as an attorney. Then you have the wrong clients. 
if the people that you're serving do not find value in what you're doing, either it's the wrong fruit or the wrong client. So I would investigate both of those. I would even investigate if you even want to be an attorney in that level. If you try different fruits and try to be an attorney to different kinds of clients, then it's probably either one, not your heart calling, or two, you're serving the wrong people. All right? Khadija says here, you've inspired me to say celibates. I'm telling you, y'all, celibacy is one of the fastest ways to wealth. Celibates, celibacy reserves your energy in. Celibacy brings your energy back into your life. So you're not male identified and male focused. Okay. You're not, you're not identified with how to please men, how to be desirable to men. You're first securing your position in the kingdom, the kingdom of your mind, where you're producing real fruit for your children or those you love. I cannot describe the feeling I get. When I produce meaningful, tangible things for my children, to see my son and my children walk into buildings they own, I cannot explain that to you. And no amount of being booed up can replace that because I'm satisfied as a woman. I'm satisfied as a woman. I'm satisfied. I'm in right standing with the kingdom. I'm in a good standing with managing my resources. It is not perfect all the time. There are times when things get extremely tough. But I hold on to the resoluteness and the absoluteness of that seed. There are some things in my life as a woman that has shaken me to my core. I once lived in an abandoned building with my children with no running water, sleeping on the floor because I chose that so I can make a tractor note. Let me explain something to you. Bringing a seed to territory is not for the weak. It is for those that believe that we have been inspired and designed to have power in this existence. There are times when you will go through evictions with a smile on your face because you know you gave it the best you had, but you got your assets in your back pocket. So you can walk away from things that do not have a value. I'm telling you, this is what I know. Bringing a seed to territory will test the core of your character and who you are. So when you are building wealth and you're building big dreams, celibacy is a perfect route. It's like bleeding out for so much energy. You're bleeding out. You're constantly losing energy. You're losing energy. You're losing energy. And that focus that you put on satisfying a male can be the same focus you put on creating a generational pipeline from seed to territory in your business. Okay? Mo says, how do I know? Let me scroll up here before I get to Mo. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Celibacy vow was taken. Okay. Um, last month, I'm really grasping now. I let men wild me for years. Husbands, boyfriend, no more. Absolutely. And it's not the men that's the, that's the problem. It's all this responsibility that comes with it or whether or not they give you the responsibility. It's too much. For me, I find it very, I can't focus on male-based relationships if I'm not where I want to be as a woman. If I'm not satisfied with who I am as a woman, I ain't laying down with nobody. And even when I am satisfied, if there's a goal on the table and I'm, I'm acquiring a larger territory and I'm in the middle of another acquisition, I am to myself. So you're absolutely correct. It brings back your energy. It brings back your focus and it increases your production. Absolutely. Celibacy would do it every time. Yes, Tasha Tasty said celibacy is a powerful tool. Powerful tool. All right, Feminine Mystic says, my question is, where does the concept 
of time come in, like the timeline from point A to the beginning of wealth building to actually having your own wealth Thank you in advance. That depends on how you move. That depends on how you take action. If you take bold action, you take bigger steps faster. If you take small steps, you take you have progress slower. So the timeline determines a couple of things. One is if the seed is yours and how far are you energetically from that goal? So a woman that is a woman that is living at the bare minimum and she wants to be a hundred million dollars net worth, but she doesn't read books by people that have a hundred million dollar net worth. She doesn't do the things that they do. She doesn't go what they go. She doesn't practice seed acquisition the way they do. Then the time span is greater because in order for her to see that in her physical reality, she's got to jump a lot of timelines and lifelines in the alternate space. So you can imagine that your goal may be here. But right now, you're currently right here. Just because you want this goal real bad right here, doesn't collapse that time. So the time draws near as you take action, right? As you take action, you are now elevating to the higher level of that goal. And that goal is going to be something that is something that is with either within reach or not within reach. And I would say that there's no such goal that's not within reach. It's your proximity to it that may feel like it's not within reach or within reach. If you're already making a million dollars, it's easier to make $5 million. But if you're only making $5 a week and you want a million dollars, You've got a lot of growth and development before you see your fruition, before you see your physical reality start to filtrate with that new reality. Okay? So it takes time based on your individual proximity. How close are you to your goal? See, some of these manifesting folks will tell you if you want it, you can have it. That's a lie. You can want all you want to. If you're not in proximity to that goal energetically, you simply cannot have it yet. But the fastest way to bring it into that, into your fold, into your experience is to go through the motion of um, getting information and taking action, getting information and taking action and investing in that reality. Absolutely. Kadisha say this is big. OK, I, thank you, Kadisha. I hope they hear it as well. Um, B says, how beautiful here. Facts, how do you know uh, what your seats are? I uh, how do I zone in on your purpose? Well, okay, so your seeds you were born with. If you can revert back to the time in your life when you were young enough to dream or to desire without limitations, if you could take yourself to that place and try to recapture some of those original essences, some of those original passions that you had before the world told you what you could and could not be. Some of that, some of those remnants are still there. And let me say this, you have several seeds, right? You have some that are more dominant than others, but a non-dominant seed can be activated and bear fruit as well. Okay. So you will know your seeds because it will align with your heart essence. It will align with who you are as a core person, your core value system, what you are, what truly brings you happy. Those are your seeds. And a lot of times that's not what you do. That's not your passion. That's not what you're retirement for. That's not how you make money. But your seeds only you can know because it is the barometer for your seeds is your heart essence. That is the true barometer for your seeds. Okay. All right, I'm satisfied as a woman. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Um, how do you, all right, it says, how do you deal with solitude? I'm single, but all of my close friends are married. The single women I know are not in this mode. It's been a lonely journey and that wears me out. Well, one of the things that you can do is, all right, you can feed your seeds. 
like you would feed a relationship. So the way that I organize information, when I have ideas, I have a whole little, I used to have a, like a mason jar, like an idea jar, right? And I used to put them in the jar, but now I kind of write them in journals and do like mind maps and stuff like that. But when I have an idea, I try to immediately go to a mind map and start to kind of branch off. I replace re those relationships with the ability to prioritize my territory and my sovereignness and my fulfillment as a woman. Okay. So that is not a substitution for your male-based relationships. But I would argue that a supreme woman, an ancestral woman, is not satisfied anyway until she has her own. So he's more the surrogate in the substitute for your time. And it's only about a time before that is not really, before that breaks up because the core of the issue is that you are not may not be satisfied with where you are. But as a woman, I always, had a problem. Yes, Coach Jay, when I was not in right standing with the kingdom. And the kingdom is the organization of my territory and my family. It is the organization and the management of my territory. So when I was not always in right standing and while I was with the man, it sucked out what little energy I had. And even though all your friends are married, you have quite an advantage of not being married and been able to get your territory first, which makes for a more powerful mate and a better marriage when and if that day comes for you. I wouldn't use the word loneliness. What I would say, if you feel like you're lonely, then you haven't cultivated ways of interacting with your seeds. And that's not to say it should be a substitute, but when you are consumed by your standing as a woman, and you prioritize that over relationship, you will find creative ways to travel, to adventure, to learn new things, to read new books, to discover new things, to open a small business, to try different things. It's deeply fulfilling because it's all part of expanding your territory. So I would say it's, it's, it's definitely solitude, but it, it's definitely not loneliness. Loneliness is I don't know what to do with the energy that I have because I'm not connected to another person. Solitude is spending time with yourself. Okay. So just kind of govern that and find creative ways, um, uh, mind maps and things like that to work with your ideas. And I would highly encourage if you have problems with long periods of servitude to travel more and experience different cultures and different kinds of relationships and mentors and things like that as well. Okay. All right. Um, I've learned to jump timelines. Absolutely. Any wisdoms from navigating heart thieves, snakes, aggressive saboteurs while you're in the planting phase? Um, keep the seed to yourself and let's, until you're ready to release it. Keep your seed to yourself until you have a pretty good grips on releasing it. That way they can't sabotage what they don't know exists. Okay. What are a few attributes of right seeds or right seeds? Uh, planet at birth. Well, one of the characteristics of having the right seed is it feels aligned with your soul and your heart essence. When you were born, you were created for a specific reason. That is your seed. That is also your business. Some of the right seeds are the seeds that feel the most natural to you that brings you energy. The right seeds will always bring you energy and excitement. It's like me going on tonight with the art of domination was a right seed for me because I like sharing and empowering and inspiring women to live high owning lifestyles, high fruit, uh, fruition lifestyles. I don't teach a doctrine of marriage and finding the right one, all those are secondaries to being solid and satisfied with yourself as a woman, okay? So the right seed will feel empowering to you. It is inspiring to you. It feels natural to you. It feels great to you. You're able to uh, gain energy from the right seed, okay? All right, I actually have, okay. Answer my question right now. Okay, great. 
Um, choose what sometimes it means just absolutely. Sometimes you're gonna have to distance yourself from other people. How can I work on my goals? Um, not all says, how can I work on my goals when I feel burdened down with the sole responsibility of caring for kids? This is a great question because this is what I experienced a couple of months ago. I found it increasingly difficult to care for kids and in my children in an environment that did not nourish my seeds. So I made the decision to move across the world to get a full-time staff and to manage my businesses from a distance. Sometimes you have to change environments, okay? And this is not always easy because children are a lot of responsibility, right? And this is why, although we can't go back and be like, okay, you know, this is a situation right here. You know, I can't make a person be, I didn't co-parent when my children were younger. I'm going to be honest with you. It co-parenting with a person who does not want a family drained me of my energy. If they did not want the family in the beginning, what makes co-parenting better with this person? The reality of it is co-parenting is just a simply another responsibility for you. Making sure that they have access to their children is now another job for you. So I would say start looking at places where you can live, where you can get help with your children in your home. Not daycare, not family, but someone that can come in your home and help you take care of your children so you can focus on your territory. Because if you don't gather the time to build the territory and to nurture the seeds, you can't make them or leave them anything. So I would say, look at environments where you can live, especially if you have remote work or your job allows you to be uh, remote. Look at ways and places you can live for a low cost of living to get in-house help so that you can expedite the process from seed to territory. I just went through that and I chose to relocate for that very specific reason. Okay. It's because I'm at a point where my companies are growing, but my home life was not stable. So I had to get where I could say, you know what? I need a team of people. Y'all ma help me manage this family. This is the order I want. This is the discipline I want. This is the schedule I want. It's y'all's job to make sure this is done. I'm going out to hunt. I'm a huntress. So I'm going out to hunt for my family. And I don't think that's masculine. Actually, because I'm a woman that is an ancestral sovereign supreme woman, hunting is a pleasure for me. I get the best of both worlds. I get to move with grace, but also ruthless as need, if needed. I'm able to go out and seek opportunities and travel and look and see what is working, what doesn't work, what does. I'm able to grow those things. So I say definitely get help in your house. Um, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Change your environments. Okay. Um, Co-parenting. Um, I would have been over backwards. Yeah, co-parenting doesn't work. If they didn't want the family, they don't, they don't want the kids. Uh, and they don't want you or me <laughs> or whoever is in that situation. But co-parenting is just a responsibility to give them the rights of a dad uh, without being a father to a family. It can be a dad without being a husband. They can be a father without being a husband. Yeah. It's better if you remove the access. It's just more work for you. And it's also heartbreaking for the child too because at their core they know that other person don't want to be bothered that's why they left it's because they don't want to be there so you know as women we have this is some hard pills to swallow but we have to be honest about these things in some situations when that other person is not there or don't want to be there hey you can do this when you're 18 but i'm not going to manage this relationship right now i've got to recover from the years i lost that we didn't build anything so i got to go out here and hunt 
and you can call them masculine, the salt, all this stuff like that. If you have not built wealth for your children, you are in a hunting mode. It does not mean you're in a masculine role. What means you got to get out and find opportunity or create it. Okay? Let that co parent mess alone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you have to cut that mess off because it's just, it's, 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 it's ongoing. It's, 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 it's a mess. And the reality of the matter is, if they wanted to be there, they would be there. And so you have to really be able to um, you have to be really be able to understand what they understand that they're they're not there for a reason. Right. They're not there because they've chosen not to be there. Right. So these are just some things that I think as 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 women that are really intending to dominate on Earth, you've got to cut off all bleeding sectors. All sectors that say, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that, blah, 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 blah. Anything that is causing you to be unfocused on your personal expansion, your character, your principles, your expansion, you have to let those things go because as a woman that is building wealth, you have to be focused. And building wealth by trying to co-parent with somebody that doesn't want to be there, now you got to babysit them being a parent is problematic, Right? And if you are married, then your spouse should be building territory with you as well. So it goes both ways. It goes absolute both ways. So y'all, it's been nice. It's been real. I thank y'all for coming on. This channel will have more. I think I'm going to do another video again on the power of the seed. I'm going to do one on territory building and all these components so we have some great understandings of, especially the alternate space. I want to introduce those constructs to you um, because I think that it's important that you understand you don't have to get in line with what you want. You don't have to spend all day manifesting this and manifesting that. You have to go to where it already exists. You have to go. There's no manifesting if anything is more realizing okay but manifesting is so you know 10 years ago we're now able to move in lifelines and assume different realities and it takes practice but i can tell you this it works when you decide that you are here to live a powerful life to dominate in this life to see how far your potential takes you to govern yourself a high... See, men of lower class don't want you to have high character. They need you to have low self-esteem. They need you to believe that men are in the shortage. Good men and unicorns are in the shortage. So you should be happy with what you got and fix and work with what you got. They don't want you to know that if you're in a different environment with different people and you have acquired certain things, a certain mastery about your experiences, you can have anything you want. It just won't be them. So this is just a tidbit of what this YouTube channel will be about. Um, I'm going to put more videos out, more master classes out where you can actually come and get videos. They won't be quite this long. This is the hour and 30 minutes. But I'm going to try to get some little short videos to let you know, okay, what is territory? What is a seed? What does it mean to harvest? What does it mean to put a system in place? How to tell if it's your seed? I'll put some more short, you know, you know 20 minute videos or stuff on there so you can be able to revert back there. Watch this over and over again. It will be publicly displayed on my YouTube channel. Um, if you need to watch it over and over again, it's going to be there. If you need to go back and watch it and take notes, it's going to be there. I'm going to leave this one public and build from this point. So thank you so very much for coming on to the masterclass tonight. Thank you for your questions, your attention, your energy, your positiveness, your ability to receive and opening yourself up to greater. Don't believe all this stuff about what the feminine should look like. At the end of the day, you always will receive what you have chosen. So if you choose to settle, you will receive a settlement. But if you choose to master and exercise dominion over your existence on earth in terms of your territory, I'm really big on women in territory because the moment you own territory is the moment you are considered a wealthy woman. And that shift mentally automatically closes the doors to entire classes of men.
unless you go back and try to rehab one of them, right? So the issue here is allowing the art and the spirit of domination to dwell in your experience. But there's nothing to settle for. There's nothing to be feminine for. There's nothing to dislike about the masculine prince. None of that is true. Take the focus on what's going on outside of you and focus on practicing and cultivating the spirit and the art of dominion and the art of domination in your actual lived reality. And you will find that the things that you truly desire that lines up with why you're here will come into experience in a seamless way. Thank you so much for tonight. I appreciate the energy. I love you all. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel. This is now my new place to do videos. I won't be doing any more videos on Facebook. I will do them right here. If you follow Dr. Portia Fulford on YouTube, um, not YouTube, on Facebook, Dr. Portia Fulford, please make sure you follow that channel. Um, I'll be posting more master classes for the, the community here. The goal is to go into 2023 with a different mindset. A mindset of domination, a mindset of expansion, a mindset of celibacy, a mindset of closing off all the doors that have not led to fruit, a mindset of I'm going to close out myself to experiences that lower my character, experiences that lower my net worth, experiences that predisposes me to things that are not of me. So peace, please, and, uh, peace and blessings. I promise you, I will do another master class before we go into New Year's. Um, if you could please um, share this with your friends and family and the women that are of like mind, I would really appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a great night. Peace and blessings, y'all.